Abby Andrew here today back for another live stream here on the Renee of Paris channel and today is going to be a slightly different topic than what I usually do. I've done a topic like this in the past on these lives before um, but we kind of like to mix up the topics so today is going to be a live all about cosplay 101. So I know a lot of people that follow this channel, obviously we're all wig lovers and wig fans, and there are a couple of different categories of people who like to wear wigs. There's people who wear them solely for fashion. There's people who wear them uh, due to hair loss. Like myself, that's how I got started with wigs. Um, and now it's also great because people who wear them for hair loss also wear them for fashion because they are so fashionable and in style, especially lately, a lot of different people are wearing wigs. But a whole other category of um, wig fans and uh, these wig wearers is like a cosplay category. So sometimes if you look at like the wigs that are kind of designed more for cosplay, they can be like lower quality and cheapy looking and like you don't have to be using those like low quality looking wigs for your cosplay because it's also awesome to be able to use nice quality wigs that are still in the affordable price range to make your cosplay just look that much better. And I think some people that are into cosplay don't really know the amazing options that are out there as far as good quality wigs that are still affordable and wearable. And just to give a little bit of background on myself for those that don't know you, I have, that don't know me, I have had alopecia since about two and I've been wearing wigs since about the age of seven consistently every single day. And as I got older, I became more confident about wearing wigs and decided to start wearing all sorts of different wigs. So if you follow my own Instagram at abbyandrew.yt, you see that I change up my wigs on a regular basis. And part of the way that I got more comfortable switching up wigs so often was actually using cosplay and costumes to get myself comfortable wearing all these different styles. And then once I started to wear them all the time for costumes, then I started to experiment and dabble more with wearing all these fun different wig styles and colors in my day-to-day -day life. So I'm gonna talk about in this video ways that you can get started cosplaying, whether it's um, just for videos in the comfort of your own home or whether you want to wear them out to cons. I'm going to talk about a couple of the different routes and methods you can take. There's people who are very creative who like to make all the components themselves and there's people who just like to dress up and don't necessarily like the crafting element and that's totally valid as well. So no matter which part interests you, whether it's the making and the creating or if it's just the dressing up, that all, all of that is amazing. So if you enjoy any of those things, then you can totally get into cosplay yourself. A lot of times when people hear that I cosplay or they see some of my cosplay photos, they'll say something to me like, I've always wanted to cosplay, I just don't know how to get into it. And I think that a lot of people think that it's a lot more intimidating and daunting than it actually is. It can be as simple as going online uh, to a basic website and just searching like costume for fill in the blank character that you want to cosplay and just buying the costume that is completely valid and easy to do. So for me personally, I started cosplaying. Um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when I started cosplaying because I kind of, I've always loved dressing up for Halloween and then as I got older my Halloween costumes became more and more elaborate and every time Halloween was over I would be so disappointed that I like that opportunity to dress up as a fun character was over. And then I started to realize that I didn't have to limit my dressing up as a character or like making costumes. I didn't have to limit that to just Halloween. So if you're someone who kind of thinks that same way, who loves Halloween and is really sad that it's over, bear in mind that you can do other, you can dress up in costumes for other events as well. So of course, uh, back in like 2019 or so, that's when I started to really go to conventions and things like that. So I'm based in the New York City area. So there's conventions like Comic Con, Anime NYC, PAX East, and a couple of those were the first cons that I went to. And it was a little bit intimidating at first to go to these cons dressed up in a costume because I had never been to a con. I didn't know what to expect. And when I was there, it was so incredible to discover the, the amazing community of people that are interested in the same things that you are, if you're interested in cosplay, to go to a place where everyone is kind of dressed up, everyone's really enthusiastic about it, people are going all out, and it's just a really amazing experience. So of course, I haven't been to a con in quite some time now, as you can probably guess. So that also brought me into the world of kind of online cosplay is kind of the best way that I can think to describe it is simply on platforms like Instagram and like TikTok. So 
For a long time, I didn't really look at TikTok or use it very much, but then I started to see TikToks that people would make um, that were dressed as like cosplay characters and they would make these really cute and fun cosplay videos on TikTok using, uh, if you're not familiar with TikTok, you can use different audio sounds that people upload and people would upload like uh, the audio of a character speaking and they would dress up as that character and just make a really cute video kind of lip syncing to that, what that character was saying. And it's all pretty simple and straightforward, but then I started to get into making those kind of videos myself and it's just so much fun. And I think doing, making online cosplay content is a really great way for someone who is interested in getting into cosplay, but maybe nervous to actually like wear it to a convention to start out. I think the online cosplay community is so fun for exactly that because you can dress up and make costumes from the comfort of your own home without worrying about judgment and it's just a really fun thing to do and even if you make these cosplay videos and like you feel nervous about posting them you can just save it you don't even have to post it if you don't want to they're still just fun to make so i'm going to get into the different kind of types of crafting that people get into when they are cosplaying and of course since this is a wig channel that talks about wig topics i'm going to show you some of my favorite wigs that I've used for cosplays and different things you can do to style them to make them even better for cosplay looks. So obviously because I have alopecia I wear wigs for that reason and that's how I got started with wigs but all of these wigs that I'm going to include in this video that I've used for cosplays they're not exclusively cosplay wigs and I wear them on a regular basis as well. And that's the fun of um, like the Renee of Paris lines there's so many different lines that we have that some of them are in the affordable price point, especially for costumes, if you're not necessarily going to wear the wig that often, but it'll still look am like amazing quality, which will make the quality of your costume that much better. And then if you decided you wanted to wear them on like a regular basis, they're good enough quality that you can totally do that as well and it will look amazing. So just to kind of show you some of the different wigs that I have here, I wanted to wear this wig for this video today. This is Lavish Waves in one of the brand new colors it was just released in. Uh, this is the color um, sugarcane. <laughs> I, I keep mixing up sugarcane and creamy toffee. I believe this is sugarcane. It just came out in... I feel like I have to check, okay? So I'm going to take this off for a second and double check the tag because I don't want to give um, misinformation here. Uh, this is Lavish Waves. It's creamy toffee. It is creamy toffee. So I'm mixing up the colors here. So Lavish Waves is a style that many of you might know and love, uh, but it just came out into more natural looking colors, which is great for people who don't necessarily... Uh, wear bright fun colors. This is part of the Muse collection and the Muse collection has some amazing fun colors But it was just released in um, Creamy toffee and marble brown. So the reason I wore this wig for this video is because I recently just made a TikTok video that was like semi cosplaying but not exactly um, About the Mean Girls characters and this is one of the wigs I used in that video So I wanted to wear it for this, especially because if you go onto my channel and you see that like Mean Girls content video, I'm not even all out in cosplay, but if you are interested in cosplay and you don't necessarily want to go all out making these costume pieces, it can be as simple as that. It can be as simple as putting on a wig that kind of looks like and resembles a certain character and maybe like a simple outfit that kind of resembles it and it could be as simple as that. Or you can go all out and style the wig to look exactly like the character, make different costume pieces, and it's really up to you how far you want to go, and it's all valid. So that's part of what was daunting for me getting into cosplaying was I wasn't sure whether it was like acceptable to buy cosplay pieces. I always thought it was, or I used to think it was looked down upon to buy pieces instead of making them. And that's totally not true. If you choose to create the pieces, that's awesome. And if you choose to just buy the pieces, that's awesome too. And it's all really fun and amazing. So every time that I kind of get into, if I think of a character and I want to start making a cosplay of that character, the first thing I'll do is try to figure out what I'm capable of making. Because I'm kind of like a beginner to intermediate cosplayer myself. I'm, I don't have like amazing crafting skills. I'm still learning. So every time I'm making a new cosplay, I challenge myself to try out a new skill that I haven't used before and kind of see what happens. And sometimes the piece that I'm trying to make doesn't come out as good as I hoped, but it's still an amazing learning experience so that the next time I try to use that type of crafting skill, I'm even better at it in the future. 
So some basic things that you can do. Sewing is obviously a huge part of cosplaying. Um, so here are some pieces that I have sewn. Again, I only really started to learn how to sew in like the end of 2019. So these are all pieces that I made as a complete beginner. This here shirt that I'm gonna show you, um, if you guys are familiar with, this is a little wrinkly, so don't mind the wrinkles, but this is the very first garment that I ever really made. And it was for a character called Stella from the Winx Club, which is really popular right now because the, uh, the Netflix series just came out about the live action of that cartoon, but it's a cartoon that I grew up on. And for so long, this was a character that I wanted to dress up as for Halloween, but there just weren't any costumes available online that were pre-made. So finally, one year, I decided to challenge myself to make the costume because I just really wanted to cosplay this character so badly, and the pre-made costume pieces didn't exist. But I didn't really have any sewing skills whatsoever. So what I ended up doing is I bought a sewing machine online for like $30, like a very, very basic beginner sewing machine. And it was actually pretty easy to teach myself the basics with YouTube videos and things like that. And it was really helpful, and if I can do it, you definitely can yourself. And this was the piece that I ended up making. Uh, it's hard to kind of show you what it looks like because it looks a lot better on, of course, uh, and it is a bit wrinkly right now. But it was just so simple. I ended up just, what I did was I used a shirt that already fit me really well. So if you don't know how to work with measurements, this is something you can do as well, is I used a shirt that was tight fitted and fit me well, and I laid it out on this really sparkly, beautiful fabric that I bought online. I love the way this fabric looks. It is so beautiful and sparkly. And I laid it out on the yard of fabric that I had and I just traced the shirt that fit me well. So it was easy because I didn't really know how to work with measurements yet. So all I did was laid out a shirt that already fit me, traced it out, and ended up cutting out two pieces that uh, were this kind of shape because that's the shape that the character called for. And it was really basic to just use this very inexpensive sewing machine that I purchased on a whim to make a Halloween costume last minute. And you just sew the two pieces together with the seam on the inside. And you can also finish the edges by just kind of folding over the edge and sewing that. And of course there's some, like I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't try to like sell this. Like if I got this at a store, it probably wouldn't be good enough quality that someone, if, if they sell this at a store, they wouldn't think it was good quality and they'd probably be upset about um, how these seams aren't exactly the neatest thing in the world. But that's the other fun thing about cosplay is that it does not have to be perfect. And I think that Fellow cosplayers are very understanding of like learning the ropes and things like that. So even just trying your hand at making a piece is already just like a great thing to do as far as making your own cosplay. And even if it doesn't come out perfectly, it's still a great learning experience and it can still look really good. So even though the seams aren't perfect, no one's going to be looking that closely and it is just a costume piece. So it does not by any means have to be perfect. But so when I was making that cosplay for Stella from Wings Club, I figured that I could make a shirt pretty easily and it ended up coming out successfully so I was really happy about that but because I was still kind of testing the waters with sewing what I would do when I was making a new cosplay is I would make the things that I thought I was capable of making and then if there was something I wasn't entirely sure if I was capable of making it what I would do is I would just buy those pieces um, and in the future every time I make a new cosplay I try to make more and more of the pieces myself but for example, the shirts that I wore for that costume, this is them. These I, I bought pre-made, and I bought them from the same website that I bought the other sparkly fabric that I made the shirt out of from. But because I wasn't sure about like the measurements for making shorts, because I'd never made shorts before, the shorts I ended up buying and the shirt I ended up making. So it was kind of just a way to make what I could, but because I wasn't confident about how the shorts would come out, I ended up buying those, and it kind of ended up being a mix. And just talking about that same character as well, that character also has orange sparkly boots. This is getting into the category of um, spending money on cosplay. Sometimes people don't want to spend lots and lots of money on a character cosplay. You can do it for cheaply as well. A lot of the things that I use in cosplay are actually thrifted pieces or things that I already owned that I modify so that I'm not spending money on a whole new piece. You can kind of modify and work with things you already have. So for that character, Stella from Winx Club, this is a great example of that because I had these boots already. <laughs> these really crazy pink go-go boots that I just love. They're so fun and cute. And the character had boots like this that were the same style, but not this color. So instead of buying all new boots in the right color, which was like the same bright orange, I ended up making boot covers. 
that look like this. So then I can slip the boot in here and it looks really great and it looks like an orange sparkly boot once it's actually in it, in the sleeve. And um, it's just a great way to modify something you already have without buying like a whole new boot, for example. And these I made solely following YouTube videos. I've never made anything like this and it ended up actually coming out really great. Um, the bottom of them are really dirty because obviously I'm wearing them on the floor when I do wear them. But it was just a lot of trial and error with these. But if you just have patience and take your time, you can end up making something really cool. And I made these as like pretty much the first cosplay I made myself using sewing. And it ended up coming out so much better than I ever expected. I never thought that I would be capable of sewing something so elaborate and it ended up coming out really great. So now also to show another thing that I used for cosplay, I'm going to switch wigs because this character, um, I have the wig here that I wore for this character that I'm going to show you. Let's see. So a lot of times, since I already wear wigs regularly, a lot of times it's really fun to, when I get a wig that comes in a fun color, I like to also make cosplays that go with that wig. So it's not that I necessarily bought the wig for cosplay, but sometimes a wig that I already owned just looks so good with certain characters that I end up using it for that. So this is a wig that I just had because I um, love the color and the style to wear normally. This is Angelica in the color Red Copper. But because this color is so recognizable and vibrant, it's also perfect for so many characters. I have used this wig specifically for so many different characters. So let me switch over to this one. Let's see here. So again, this is like a really nice wig. It's not like a cosplay wig, but it just happens to work for cosplay because it's just so, the color is just so vibrant and fun. I just took it out, out of a bag a little while ago, so let me just kind of comb it out gently. But if you want to guess in the comments below which character I have used this wig for, feel free to put your guesses in now, and then I will tell you which characters I've done. Also, if, if I don't mention a character that I have done, feel free to mention suggestions for any of these wigs that I show because I also love getting suggestions for some of these colors. Okay, so the, the, co the characters that I have used this wig for are Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Um, I've used it for Pennywise from the movie It. I actually did that for Halloween this year. And of course, you can get creative. You don't have to recreate a character to the T, to every detail. So obviously when you think of Pennywise, Pennywise doesn't have long, feminine, like flowing, beautiful hair, but I kind of did like a female Pennywise version and I just kind of made it into like, almost like a cute clown costume, but like Pennywise inspired. So I used face paint to do the basic Pennywise face paint. And all I did was I took regular hair ties and I sewed, and if you don't know how to sew, you could probably use like hot glue or something. And I just attached these little pom-poms to the hair ties. This took me so little time to do, and it was obviously very, very inexpensive, but just doing something as simple as that just kind of made the costume really cute. It's just an added little detail. So for the Pennywise costume, I ended up just putting this wig in pigtails, and the pom-pom just added that really cute element that kind of fit for like a clown type of cosplay look. So that's just a sample of how it looks for this costume. And I kind of put one in either side. And then I also attached pom-poms to the shoes I made that I, and again, there were shoes that I already owned and just adding that pom-pom made it perfect for the cosplay without having to buy whole new shoes. So someone uh, said Ariel, that's a good, that's a good suggestion for this wig. Um, but another character that I was going to mention is Starfire from Teen Titans. So yes, so here's that, another piece that I sewed that worked perfectly for Starfire. Oh, it's in my lap. I was looking for it on the table. So this is something I made and this is something that I don't know how well it comes across on camera or how familiar you are all with Starfire, the character, but I cannot believe that I made this. This is one of those things that when I went into starting the process of making it, I did not have high expectations for what I was capable of doing because I'd never made anything like this. And then once it come out, it came out at the end, like this, I'm so proud of this. So it's actually supposed to be like her armor. So I'm gonna put it on, let me take off my jacket. I wore this jacket today because it's my diva jacket from Overwatch. And I'm going to mention some diva cosplay pieces that I have here as well in a minute, but for now, let me switch. 
So of course Starfire wears like an orange top, so I'll pretend I'm wearing an orange top. But this neck piece is something that I sewed entirely from just starting with basic fabric and I just cut out the shape of the armor and what I did is I put some like thicker material, like a felt in between, so it kind of had more of a rigidity to it to be more like armor. And I sewed it to this neck piece and I put Velcro on the back. And when it's actually on, it looks like this, if it's velcroed in place. And it ended up being really perfect for the Starfire cosplay. So here's with that. So again, this wig, even though it's a wig that I already had and already love wearing like on a regular basis, it just worked so perfectly for a Starfire cosplay. And now I want to get into another category of like cosplay making, um, which I am still kind of learning myself. I'm definitely not very experienced in this type of cosplay crafting, but it's a really popular one and it's, it is incredible what people are capable of making with this kind of method. Oh, someone asked me, did that wig come in that color or did you alter it in any way? This wig did come in this color. So this is the color Red Copper in the wig Angelica and it is such a beautiful vibrant color. So I did not do anything to this. It is this beautiful orange, like bright color with the roots. And it's just, I just love this color so much. So again, it's a wig that I would wear on a regular basis, but it also is just so perfect for so many different characters as well. Like I was saying, um, Daphne from Scooby-Doo, I've used this for, um, Bloom from Winx Club. Winx Club is like kind of popular these days. So I don't know if you are all familiar with that character, but I will definitely use this wig for Bloom. And like I said, I used it for Pennywise. If you can get really creative and use the same wig for so many different looks. And again, it doesn't ha you don't have to buy a whole new wig for a costume. If you look at the collection of wigs you already have, you can come up with ideas using what you already own. So this is a good example of that. So now I'm gonna move on to, because we're talking about maybe, maybe doing characters using wigs you already own, a lot of us on here might stick to more natural looking colors, so you don't necessarily have to use all the bright fun colors for cosplay. Um, you can even just use like the normal colors you have. This color is so beautiful. This is the wig Elliot from Noriko in Mulberry Brown. So this is totally a wig that's like very natural looking color, but it also happens to be perfect for another character that I wanted to cosplay. Again, you can make any guesses for this one. And this one you could probably use for so many. There are so many like brunette characters out there that this wig would work really well for. But I was actually just wearing the jacket of this character before. Again, my Overwatch jacket that I was wearing. This wig works so perfectly for a diva cosplay. And the diva cosplay, when I made this cosplay or when I needed this cosplay, it was a very for a very last minute occasion. So this is a, an example of a cosplay where I bought the suit because um, I wasn't sure I was capable of making that, but I tried my hand at making some of the components. So one category of cosplay crafting that a lot of people get into that people can make some amazing stuff with this, but I'm still learning myself, that is called EVA foam crafting, so EVA foam. And it can either be as simple as like basic craft, uh, craft foam that you can buy at the craft store, even in like the kids section, or sometimes people buy like thicker versions of this material from like a hardware store because sometimes people will use this foam for different like hardware DIY home projects, uh, like for flooring and stuff like that. But you can really kind of shape and mold this material to make armor. And the things that I've seen people do are so out of this world and creative. So the thing that I ended up making, something else that, that I kind of use as a tip for if you are getting into making cosplay, let's say you are making it for a deadline Sometimes if I'm going to be experimenting with making something and I'm not sure if it's going to come out okay, I'll kind of have a backup just in case the thing I make doesn't come out well. And this was an example of that. So I made Diva's headset and it was my first time crafting with EVA foam. I also did not buy the right materials. I think it would have been easier if I had purchased thicker foam, but I only purchased the really thin like one millimeter, two millimeter like kids crafting foam. And I ended up making the headset and it came out looking like this. So if you're going to get into cosplay, don't be afraid of trying new things. And even if it doesn't come out okay, it's still a great learning experience. <laughs> so this completely looks like a child's craft project. I still ended up wearing this to a con when I was Diva for the first time. And I feel like it's kind of recognizable if you're wearing the rest of the outfit. And it's still a fun, cute piece. But yeah, it's maybe not the greatest. So I had used this for one con. And this wig is so perfect for Diva as well that even if your cosplay components aren't perfect, 
the wig really does bring it to that next level because it just looks so realistic. But eventually, since I, the ones that I tried to make didn't come out well, when I did Diva again later on, I did end up purchasing a headset to use instead because it just looks so much better. So while some people can do EVA foam crafting and it ends up looking amazing, like people can make this on their own and it looks great. The thing that I tried to make, this is the very first time I ever crafted with EVA foam. It didn't come out looking the greatest, but it was still a fun learning experience. But again, don't be afraid to buy pieces if you feel like you need that, if that's going to help you get started. And then as you do more and more cosplays, you can kind of learn um, new skills each time you make a new cosplay. So just to talk about some other wig styling tools that you can use to work with your synthetic wigs to make them some, like really good for a specific character, here is the Rene of Paris Protect Holding Spray. It's a hairspray. So this is what it looks like. You should still, when you're working with synthetic wigs, you should still try to use products made for synthetic wigs. But using products like this hairspray, you can kind of style the hair in ways that are more specific to the character. So if the character has bangs that fall in a very particular pattern, you can kind of shape them in that way and just use this protect holding spray to shape the, the bangs in a way that fits that character, for example. Or we can get into a category of wigs. So, so far the wigs that I've showed you are synthetic wigs. This is also a synthetic wig in a really fun color, but this one happens to be heat friendly. So that's also a great option for if you want to style your hair in a very particular way for a character. So switching over to this one, this is Posh from the Orchid Collection. And the reason I wanted to show this wig as part of this cosplay live stream that I'm doing is because this color is just so fun. I have yet to use this wig for a cosplay because I haven't decided which character it would work for. I have a couple in mind. But definitely comment below if you have any characters that this wig makes you think of. So here's what this looks like. I think there's a character from um, Dragon Ball Z that this wig kind of looks like, but I'm not, I haven't actually seen Dragon Ball Z before. So I never like to cosplay characters from content I haven't seen or like games that I haven't played yet. So if I do end up doing that character, I would have to do some research first, but. So this is such a perfect example of a wig that is like a fun, bright color. It's very recognizable for if your character does have blue hair like this, but it's also so realistic that it would just bring your cosplay to a next level. Like look at this hairline, that is insane. It just blends right in with your scalp, with your hairline, and it is just so perfect for so many characters. So again, because this fiber is heat friendly, you can use your heating tools to kind of style it in different ways. So if you have a character that might have like a little bit more wave in the hair, you can still style that in this wig, but make sure that your wigs are heat friendly before like doing anything with them and always test the heating tools on a small piece in the back to make sure that nothing happens to them. And so this is a wig that I could style using heating tools. These two are not heat friendly, so these you shouldn't use heating tools on, but you can still style them using other methods. And lavish waves that I showed you in the beginning, this one is also heat friendly as well. So even though these waves are so beautiful, if you happen to be cosplaying a character that wears straight hair, you can also kind of um, flatten these out if you wanted to with lavish waves. So always, if you're going to be using heating tools on your wig, make a thousand percent sure before doing anything that it is a heat friendly wig, always make a hundred percent sure and always test it on a small piece in the back as well. So a couple of basic tools that I think would be great for if you're just starting to get into cosplay, I would recommend teaching yourself how to sew. And I know that sounds very daunting, but like I was saying before, I taught myself how to sew using a $30 or less sewing machine, a very, very basic sewing machine that could only do a straight stitch, but I still was able to make some really great cosplays at home using just that very simple, very cheap sewing machine. The sewing machine that I used to have is also just this big, so it fit really well in my small apartment. I didn't have to find a place to store it. It was really easy to stow away when I wasn't using it. So I would recommend like teaching yourself the very basics of sewing. You don't have to learn anything too elaborate. Um, EVA foam crafting is another method you can take. Again, that's one that I'm still learning myself, so I can't talk about it too much. But if you research EVA foam crafting for cosplay, you can find some amazing tutorials about that. Another method that I have used before is 3D printing. So my brother has, he's very techy and he owns like four 3D printers. So I'm very lucky to kind of benefit from that a little bit. So this is the first piece that I ever made with incorporating 3D printing. So this is for my Raven from Starfire belt. 
and you can actually you don't have to necessarily design templates yourself with 3d printing there is a website um, that you can actually find pre-made templates that other people have uploaded and you can just kind of use that with your 3d printer to make these pieces but this ended up coming out so cool these are just individually 3d printed pieces this red piece and this kind of casing and then i just used some chain that i bought at the craft store to just kind of attach it like that so that when i put it on it's just like a really loose belt and it's perfect for raven from um, teen titans so 3d printing is another great option if you want to make things that way that one i also find very easy that's a great method i know not everyone has a 3d printer but if you do happen to buy one if you want to get into cosplaying or if you already do own one or know someone that does I think 3D printing is a great method for making pieces that look really good, but were actually pretty easy to make. And on top of that, with 3D printing, you can also get creative and paint them as well and like uh, do other things beyond just 3D printing it. So these are also something I made for my Raven cosplay from Teen Titans, and this was like the easiest thing ever to make. These were also 3D printed here, and this is just felt that I just sewed together, stitched by hand, which was very easy to do. It was before I ever learned to use a sewing machine. The stitching obviously is not the best, but no one's going to be seeing the inside of your costume anyway. And Raven from, Star Raven from Teen Titans has these kind of like cuffs as part of her costume. So all I did was sew these felt pieces into a cuff shape, glued on some Velcro, and it just was such an easy way to make something really basic that ended up just adding a nice element to the cosplay. And again, when you if you get into cosplaying, your pieces don't have to be perfect. No one's going to be judging if it does look like a child's craft project like some of my pieces do. It's just really fun and everyone in the cosplay community is so welcoming, welcoming and accepting that everyone is welcoming to beginners as well. And of course, the last thing I'll talk about, another tool that you might want to pick up if you are getting into cosplay is face paint. Face paint, I just, ever since I bought this palette, I just wish I had gotten to face paint sooner because it is just so fun. So here's what it looks like. It's just a very basic um, eight palette of face paint. And it's just amazing what you can do with this just by adding small touches to your costume. I use this to do my Pennywise cosplay with the white face paint with the red lines here. And just having those eight colors there, it just creates a world of possibility. Also for my Raven cosplay from Star from Teen Titans, I don't, <laughs> I keep almost saying Raven cosplay from Starfire, which doesn't make any sense. My Raven cosplay from Teen Titans, uh, she also has like a very pale face, like so or like almost like a gray skin tone. So I used face paint to kind of recreate that for Starfire. For Raven, I don't know why I keep mixing up their names on this live stream, um, but yeah. So even just something as basic as just adding like a gray tinge to your skin just really adds a nice element to your cosplay. So this is just some beginner tips for getting into it. Again, if you are just starting doing cosplay and you're nervous about wearing it out into the world, you can totally just do it in the comfort of your own home, especially now is the perfect time to do that. You can make TikToks with really fun cosplay content. You can get inspiration from other content creators on platforms like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. There are so many incredible tutorials and uh, you can just get started from the comfort of your own home. Make these pieces and then just have a photo shoot with yourself um, with the selfie timer on your camera take some really amazing pictures at home and just start by doing that and then once cons start happening again it's also it'll be really fun to start going to cons as well and i find that going to cons is also very inspiring to me as a cosplayer because the very first con i ever went to in cosplay i was so nervous to wear cosplay in public for some reason because i've never done it before outside of like halloween and when I got there, everyone that was cosplaying at this con was going all out. And it was just so inspiring to see how amazing these costumes looked, especially people who make their own pieces and they look so elaborate and incredible. It's just very inspiring to me as a, a crafter. So even though a lot of the stuff that I'm making so far is still very, very beginner tier. This I made like three, two or three years ago now. So this was one of the first things I ever attempted to make. And so you don't have to be afraid that something's going to come out looking not the greatest because it's all a learning experience. But for me, seeing these incredible cosplayers out there is such an inspiration for me to get into doing it even more. And again, if you want to, you could just buy the pieces and just have a lot of fun with it. And again, 
wigs are such a fun component of cosplay. So you can get you can use wigs that you already own. You can get fun colors like this that really just make a character look that much better. Especially when it's such a nice quality wig like this, but still on the affordable price point, it really just brings your cosplay to that next level with things like this really realistic looking lace part, lace front. And with the heat friendly wigs like this one, you really have a lot of flexibility with styling the hair as well. So definitely comment below any other questions you have about cosplay crafting. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned here or about any of the wigs that I showed, please definitely comment those below. And don't forget to like this video and follow our page for more wig content. And thank you all so much for watching this video. I will talk to you all very soon.